Welcome to this video lecture. This is Mark Scythian, FAA licensed aerospace technician, airframe power plant and avionics certified. The date today is January 15, 2017. In this video lecture, calculating piston engine percent VE, or volumetric efficiency, will be discussed. This is the revised version which supersedes the previous percent VE video lecture found in my YouTube video library. This version is more thorough and in-depth and allows one to mathematically calculate piston engine percent VE. The most practical method to calculate piston engine percent volumetric efficiency is to evaluate engine performance metrics at a known air to fuel ratio. Percent volumetric efficiency is the ratio between the actual airflow entering the engine cylinders divided into the theoretical airflow rating of the engine. This fraction then multiplied times 100 to equate percent volumetric efficiency. Assume that we are working with the following gasoline four-stroke six-cylinder automotive piston engine on a 2011 Buick Enclave automobile operating at no load conditions at its maximum foot-pounds torque output RPM at a dynamometer testing facility in the following atmospheric conditions. Bore and stroke, 3.7 inch diameter bore by 3.37 inch piston stroke, six cylinders, 270 foot-pounds of maximum torque output at 3400 RPM, 900 feet above sea level operation, 55 degree Fahrenheit air temperature, 14.7 to 1 average gasoline air to fuel ratio, and the induction system a naturally aspirated induction system without turbocharger or supercharger. First we need to know how much actual usable power or brake horsepower this engine is developing at its maximum foot-pounds torque output RPM. All gasoline piston engines under no load operating conditions will lose 67 percent of the energy in the gasoline just to keep the engine running. This power loss to keep the given piston engine running is known as friction horsepower in a naturally aspirated gasoline four-stroke piston engine, friction horsepower is the power lost to overcome compression, friction, drive engine accessories, draw an air fuel charge, purge, spent air fuel charge, heat engine block, and also thermal energy lost out of the exhaust. The accepted standard for actual usable power output of a gasoline piston engine under no load operating conditions is 33% brake thermal efficiency. The law of conservation of energy states that energy is not created or destroyed, but only changes in form. The law of conservation of energy absolutely complements the first law of thermodynamics, which emphasizes conservation of energy within a closed system. This means the total energy within a closed power system is constant and is equal to power losses to keep the system running plus the remaining usable power output of the system. Since this is an absolute, it becomes quite easy to calculate how much air is actually entering the cylinders of a gasoline piston engine in relation to the cylinder's rate of displacement and the average gasoline air to fuel ratio. Moving on here, we must first calculate the brake horsepower output at the rated maximum torque output RPM of 3400 RPM. So we can use the formula for calculating piston engine brake horsepower, which is equal to brake mean effective pressure in PSI times piston stroke length in feet, times piston head area in square inches, times the number of power strokes per minute, times the number of cylinders, that quantity then divided into 33,000 foot-pounds per minute, the amount of foot-pounds in one minute that equal one horsepower. We must use foot-pounds per minute units because we're dealing in terms of revolutions per minute RPM, not revolutions per second. BMEP, brake mean effective pressure, is the average pressure exerted on each piston head measured in pounds per square inch during each power stroke. L is the piston stroke length from top dead center to bottom dead center through the cylinders measured in feet or inches piston stroke divided by 12. A is the piston head area in square inches which is calculated by dividing the piston bore diameter by 2 to obtain radius and squaring the radius followed by multiplying this value times pi, which is equal to the constant 3.14159. N is the number of power strokes per minute, and on a four-stroke piston engine, the number of power strokes per minute is equal to one-half the RPM, 
and on an A2 stroke piston engine, the number of power strokes per minute is equal to the RPM. K is the number of cylinders in the given piston engine. To calculate the BMEP in pounds per square inch for a four-stroke piston engine, that would be equal to 150.8 times foot-pounds torque, that quantity then divided into the cubic inch displacement of the piston engine. If this was a two-stroke piston engine, it would be pretty much the same, except the pressure constant would be half of what it is on the four-stroke. So the torque value unit should be measured only in foot-pounds. CID stands for total cubic inch displacement. One cubic inch is equal to 16.387 cubic centimeters. 1,000 cubic centimeters is one liter, and one cubic centimeter is equal to 0 0.061 cubic inches. First calculate the cubic inch displacement and use inches value only. So we take 3.7 inch bore diameter divided by two to get radius, square that, multiply it times pi, then multiply it times 3.37 inch piston stroke times six cylinders, we get a total cubic inch displacement of 217.4 cubic inches for this given engine. In terms of cubic centimeters, that would be 217.4 multiplied times 16.387, which is equal to 3,562.5 cubic centimeters, which when divided into 1,000 becomes 3.56 liters of displacement. Next, calculate brake mean effective pressure in, D in PSI for this given four-stroke gasoline piston engine when at a maximum foot-pounds torque output of 270 foot-pounds when at an RPM of 3400 RPM. So all we do is we take 150.8, multiply it times the maximum foot-pounds torque output of 270 foot-pounds, then take that quantity and divide it into the cubic inch displacement. So at the maximum foot-pounds torque output rating of 200 and 70 foot-pounds when at an RPM of 3,400 RPM, the BMEP in pounds per square inch will be 187.3 PSI. Next, calculate the given piston engine's brake horsepower output when operating at the maximum foot-pounds torque output RPM. Again, here are the specs, just to keep an eye on it so when we make this calculation as a reference. So all we do is we take the VMEP in pounds per square inch of 187.3, multiply it times the piston stroke in feet, which is 3.37 inches piston stroke divided by 12, so 0.28 feet. Then we take the surface head area of each piston head, which is a bore of 3.7 inches divided by 2, which equals radius, then squared times pi. So we have a piston head surface area of 10.75 square inches. Then, since this is taken at the maximum torque output of 250, or 270 foot-pounds at 3,400 RPM, the operational RPM is 3,400, so in order to get the number of power strokes per minute in this four-stroke piston engine, it would be half of the RPM, so 3,400 divided by two, 1,700 power strokes per minute, times six cylinders, so when we uh, multiply them all out and divide it by 33,000, we get a brake horsepower of 174.26 brake horsepower at 3,400 RPM. Calculating the brake horsepower at rated maximum torque output RPM based on the piston engine brake horsepower and brake mean effective pressure formulas is a very valuable piece of data which will allow for more engine performance data to be calculated and known. We know as an absolute that any and all gasoline piston engines will develop no greater than 33% brake thermal efficiency or 33% of the potential energy stored in the gasoline as usable power output available at the crankshaft in the form of brake horsepower during no load operating conditions. So if we were dealing with total power in the entire engine that would be indicated horsepower IHP which is equal to the usable power VHP plus the power loss to keep the engine running. FHP. So indicated horsepower is equal to brake horsepower plus friction horsepower. So here the IHP is the total power involved in any engine, electric motor, or power plant which includes the power loss to keep the power plant running, which is the friction horsepower, plus 
the usable power output of the given power plant, which is the brake horsepower. The usable power output of a gasoline piston engine at given RPM is the brake horsepower and is directly proportional to the BMEP and foot-pounds torque output. All other gasoline piston engine specifications do not directly apply to usable power output. Gasoline has a potential energy of 20,000 BTU per pound. Gasoline fuel density is equal to 6 pounds per 1 U.S. liquid gallon. 1 U.S. liquid gallon is also equal to 3.78 liters. This given 4-stroke, 6-cylinder gasoline piston engine on the 2011 Buick Enclave automobile will develop a brake horsepower output at its maximum rated foot-pounds torque output of 174.26 brake horsepower at 3,400 RPM. Gasoline air to fuel ratio mixture limits are based on parts air to parts fuel by weight. Gasoline air to fuel ratio stoichiometry limits are as follows. The leanest mixture is 18 to 1. Economy is 14.7 to 1. Optimal 12 to 1. And the richest 8 to 1. An automobile such as the 2011 Buick Enclave has been designed to reach economy gasoline air to fuel ratio. 14.7 to 1 as quickly as possible, or 14.7 parts air to 1 part gasoline fuel by weight. This would not occur unless sufficient airflow into the cylinders match this AFR in order to support combustion, so the proof has been validated by using this data computational method guideline. Now we can accurately calculate the amount of airflow entering the engine over a unit time of 1 second. 1 horsepower is equal to 746 watts. So 174.26 brake horsepower times 746 equals 130,000 watts. Since there are 130,000 watts of usable power in the form of brake horsepower available at the crankshaft at 3400 RPM, which is the maximum foot-pounds torque output RPM, and the brake thermal efficiency is 33% at no load conditions, we can calculate the actual amount of gasoline fuel that is consumed to support the given brake horsepower output. 130,000 watts times 1 over 0 0.33 equals 393,939.4 watts. A total power input in the form of burning gasoline of 393,939.4 watts is taking place. 1 BTU per minute output in the form of heat energy is equal to 17.6 watts. So we take 393,939.4 watts, divide that by 17.6, equals 22,383 BTU per minute. A total heat energy output in the form of burning gasoline for this given engine when operating at 174.26 brake horsepower at 3400 RPM will equal 22,383 BTU per minute. One pound of gasoline has 20,000 BTU of potential energy heat content, 22,383 BTU per minute divided by 20,000 BTU of 20,000 BTU per pound heat energy content for gasoline equates 1.12 pounds per minute of gasoline fuel delivery to this given four-stroke six-cylinder piston engine that is taking place at 174.26 brake horsepower at 3400 RPM. 1.12 pounds per minute gasoline consumption divided by 60 seconds equals 0 0.0186 pounds per second. This equates to a gasoline fuel consumption of 0.0186 pounds per second when the engine is operating at its maximum rated foot-pounds torque output of 270 foot-pounds, developing a usable power output of 174.26 brake horsepower at 3400 RPM. With an average gasoline air-to-fuel ratio of 14.7 to 1, the actual intake airflow entering the engine cylinders in pounds per second can be calculated. We set up, set up the AFR ratio algebraically where air to fuel is set up as a fraction to equal the AFR fraction to prove that it's 14.7 over 1. So all we need to do is solve for the pounds per second air. We algebraically rearrange it, solving for pounds per second air. So we take 0 0.0186 pounds per second gasoline fuel delivery input times 14.7 air to fuel ratio. Air, actually 14.7 to 1, but it's 14.7 over 1, so it's 14.7. We multiply that 
uh, the gasoline input by weight times 14.7, and that yields 0 0.273 pounds per second actual intake airflow because the airflow is by weight a ratio of the fuel flow. So now we've calculated the actual airflow intake based off the AFR going into the engine. Next is to calculate the theoretical intake airflow in pounds per second based on the engine cylinder's dimensional limits. The theoretical fuel flow in pounds per second is not needed since this is not applicable. Since the number of power strokes per minute in a four-stroke piston engine is equal to half the RPM times the number of cylinders, this, is, this also means that the number of intake strokes per minute, compression strokes per minute, and exhaust strokes per minute are all also equal to half the RPM times the number of cylinders. So the intake strokes per minute is equal to 3400 RPM, that's the max torque output RPM, divided by 2 times 6, so that translates into 10,200 intake strokes per minute, divide that in 60, so at the given parameters, 170 intake strokes per second are taking place. Each intake stroke volume is equal to the bore cross-sectional area times the piston stroke length. So if we take the bore diameter of 3.7 inches, divide it by 2, squared, times pi, times a piston stroke of 3.37 inches, that equals 36.28 cubic inches per cylinder per intake stroke. So each intake stroke in each cylinder will have 36.28 cubic inches of volume. So then we take 36.28 times 170 intake strokes per second. This translates to 6,167.6 cubic inches of airflow intake per second, theoretical. This engine will theor theoretically ingest an intake airflow equal to 6,167.6 cubic inches of airflow per second. Find the cube root of 6,167.6 to figure out what that is in linear inches, then divide the linear inches into 12 to calculate linear feet. Thereafter, cube the linear feet to calculate theoretical cubic feet volume intake per second. So we get the cube root, the cube root of 6,167.6 cubic inches. That translates to 18.34 linear inches cubed. So 18. 0.34 inches divided by 12 is 1.5, 1.53 feet cubed. So if we cube that actually from linear into cubic, 1.53 feet cubed is 3.58 cubic feet per second is equal to 6,167.6 cubic inches of volume. The theoretical airflow intake for this given engine went at 3,400 RPM will equal 3.58 cubic feet per second intake, theoretically. The next step is to find out what the density what density this volume of air is equal to. We need to know the atmospheric pressure in PSI at a given elevation in feet above sea level, and also the outside air temperature in degrees Fahrenheit to calculate the pounds per cubic foot air density of the air. The atmospheric pressure in PSI between 0 feet to 36,000 0.89 feet above mean sea level is equal to this formula here. So we simply enter the 900 feet above sea level value divided into this value. We then subtract this value from 1 and then take it to the 5.255867876 power, exponential power, and whatever we get there we multiply it times 14.7. So at 900 feet above sea level elevation, there will be 14.23 pounds per square inch of atmospheric pressure. <clears throat> Next, using the ideal gas law formula for air, the pounds per cubic foot air density based on air temperature in degrees Fahrenheit and atmospheric pressure in pounds per square inch can be calculated. So. This is the formula for calculating air density in pounds per cubic foot. 29 times the atmospheric pressure in one value divided by 10.73, the ideal gas law constant for air, times the degrees Fahrenheit plus 460 to get Rankine's absolute temperature. So if we enter the values in, 29, 29 times 14.23 divided by 10.73 times the 
quantity of 55 plus 4 or 60, close quantity, second close quantity, we get a, an evaluation of 0 0.074 pounds per cubic foot air density at the given atmospheric pressure and air temperature. The theoretical airflow intake per second for this given engine when operating at 3400 RPM at an elevation 900 feet above sea level and 55 degree Fahrenheit air temperature was calculated to equal 3.58 cubic feet per second. Now that the correct air density at given air temperature and elevation has been computed, it can be multiplied times the theoretical airflow intake of the engine operating at its maximum rated torque output RPM of 3400 RPM. So we take 0 0.074 times 3.58, 3.58, that equals a theoretical intake airflow of 0 0.264 pounds per second mass airflow. The actual intake airflow by weight is a fraction of the gasoline consumption by weight or 14.7 parts air by weight to one part gasoline fuel by weight. Converting cubic feet volume air to pounds weight air was not necessary since the pounds per second fuel delivery was already computed. The actual intake airflow based on the pounds per second PPS gasoline fuel delivery requirements to reach the engine's no load maximum foot pounds torque RPM of 3400 RPM at a gasoline air to fuel ratio of 14.7 to 1 was computed to equal 0 0.273 pounds per second. The theoretical rated airflow intake into the cylinder based on the cylinder and piston stroke dimensional limits was computed to equal 0 0.264 pounds per second. Now that the percent volumetric efficiency, now the percent volumetric efficiency can accurately be calculated completely mathematically. We get 0.273 divided by 0.263 times 100. So this particular automobile engine has a volumetric efficiency of 103% even though it is a naturally aspirated induction system. This particular four-stroke six-cylinder naturally aspirated gasoline piston engine on the 2001 Buick Enclave when operating at its maximum rated torque output RPM of 3400 RPM will develop 174.26 brake horsepower 187.3 pounds per square inch brake mean effective pressure, 270 foot-pounds of torque, and 103% volumetric efficiency. <laughs> I needed to race through this lecture because this came to about 20 pages, and a lot of people use computing or diagnostics technology, but based off uh, checking the General Motors uh, parameters for this vehicle, it's about 103.3 or right around 103%. So this calculation is about 99.6% accurate to computing. But if you ever get lost and you really need to find out a value, it's always wise or handy to have a mathematical method to do it. So this is how you do it. If you put about 20 to 25 minutes into uh, studying this video with narration, or maybe you watch it again and mute the volume and look it over, you'll eventually get the hang of it. It looks kind of complicated, but everything's logical and translates to the next uh, mystery to solve because you know that the amount of air that can go into the engine has to reflect the amount of fuel. So right there you have a dynamic, and it's just the tedious things like getting the actual air density, being very strict in the standards. But once you do all that in this method, you can mathematically calculate the VE without having to put diagnostics on it and this method works. So I thought I'd revise the original percent VE and present a thorough and in-depth method in calculating piston engine percent volumetric efficiency on a completely mathematical method. Thanks for watching this revised lecture on how to calculate gasoline or stroke piston engine percent volumetric efficiency. Like and subscribe and have a great day.